uh, good morning students uh, today we are begin our uh, session for day 18 first session uh, we have with us dr nibedita lenka from uh, national center for cell science pune uh, she is here with us to share her invited talk on view viewing life forms stem cells looking within and beyond uh, so without further delay i invite uh, dr nibedita to deliver her talk just one second are you able to see my screen ah uh, yes doctor switch on my video i just can go to the full screen now yes 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 good morning everyone today session i think it is dealing with the culturing of cells and the applications the topic that i have selected for today's discussion is viewing life forms stem cells looking within and beyond the reason we have life when we think about it is something which is discriminating living from non living as we all know life the dna is the molecule of life that provides us our own identity how about this dna has to be housed within something that is called cell and the distance of our cell that is determined from the cell because when we are alive that means all the cellular functions are intact and that is happening by coordinated interplay of different events and different factors that are actually governing these activities so the cell basic whatever our existence is depending on a life or functional cell and that is dictated by the blueprint which is inbred within the dna so to understand our own development or our own existence we need to actually look within the cell as well as see what the cell is doing in its niche or the micro environment how it is interacting with other cells and how different defined events which are very organized well organized and if there is any kind of deviation from that then we are seeing most of the disease cases that is what is happening so to understand our very existence our own development normal development we need to understand how the cell looks like how the cell functions the physiology and how different activities are regulated so for understanding if we think about we all know that we all have come from a single cell it is indeed very fascinating how whether it is unicellular or multicellular especially in the multicellular organisms and in mammalian development we all know that we all have come from a single cell that is zygote how fascinating it is to know single cell is giving rise to you and me during this process as you can see here this is a single cell which is during the fusion of uh, ovum and sperm we are getting the zygote so this has got both the maternal and paternal dna so that is giving our identity further and this signature that we are bearing so during development the same thing is transferred to all the cells so from zygote when it divides it gives rise to almost eight cell stage movula then it comes to blastocyst where actually the distinction takes place from the embryonic versus extra embryonic the embryonic part come from one of the mass i don't know whether you can see my cursor here this is the inner cell mass of cells which are called icm that gives rise to embryo proper and the outermost covering that is the trophoectoderm or trophoblast that gives rise to the all extra embryonic part then comes gastrulation during implantation this gastrulation during this stage you are getting three germ layers ectoderm uh, excuse me doctor yes. a lot of noise is coming from your side uh, can you put the mic little bit distant okay yeah one second is it okay now ah now okay doctor Okay, I think all the sound that was making sound. Okay, so during gastrulation, so you are getting three germ layers: ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These are the three germ layers. They 
give rise to all other different cell types that we are having in our body. Those cell types further they form tissues and organs, and then the entire organism is coming. So after gastrulation, you are getting the even the germ cell development also is taking place around this day after the germ layers are formed. The germ cell, the gonads are formed, then this is the fetal stage, then we are coming to the adult. So this entire body plant, it's so well organized fashion, it is being put forth. If there is any kind of defect or any kind of anomaly, then we are seeing developmental defect as well as some disease progression. So in order to understand this, how the development proceeds from a single cell to different tissues, cells and organs. So what is the basis behind? So whatever comes at the ground level, that is what we need to understand first, how the entire blueprint of the our organism and structure that is laid down. There, that's where the stem cell concept comes. So the stem in literary sense, if you think, it is the origin or a branch. So the cells that are there as a founder cells, those are called the stem cells. Why? Because if you think a building, there also the architect builds the foundation stone. The same way the foundation stone is laid for our cellular architecture or the cellular architects puts the foundation stone that is the stem cell or the mother of founder cells. From that, again it divides and gives rise to different cells which are the building blocks. The same you can bring that corollary with any kind of developmental process in a building. Then comes the tissues, then organs, then the entire organism, be it plant or animals, whether it is unicellular or multicellular. So here it is a very well-defined process. But the question comes, okay, if those are stem cells are actually underlying cause of this, then what are the different stem cells? And how do you study stem cells? What are the different tools, technology, strategies? Now all of you must be ever or listening more often about stem, area of stem or stem field. So that stem, it means, it's actually it is called science, technology, E stands for engineering, M for mathematics. I have added here another M, that is medicine. And stem cell, this concept of the area that combines all the areas, it's a transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary area, which brings the concept from all the areas into me. And that's a we understand what the stem cells are and how do you study. That's what the tools, technology and strategies that falls under the technology. And the science part is coming to under, by understanding the stem cells. And engineering mathematics, what has it to do? That I will discuss during the course of my presentation. There we have to use engineering and mathematical principles to form different organs of small organoids, even bio plants. Then comes the medicinal part, the implications. One has to ask why stem cells. In fact, all these things I have put forth, and this what you can see here, what, how, and why. Since most of you are the students and you are the boarding scientists probably. So that is what as researchers, the questions that always we ask, what is it? How is it and why is it? So that is how you can see what, how, and why stem cells. So these questions should always come into your mind. Because curiosity is the mother of immense, not only invention, it is innovation too. And this particular meeting is conducted, I think, for the innovation and invention to inculcate that spirit among you. So combining all these areas, we need to understand stem cells. I will just walk you through how this kind of research is going on, as well as what are the specific implications it may have, which you, some of you may come into um, into some of the ideas which you would like to put forth further. So first question is what are the stem cells? So this is what I have made a schematic. Based on the types as you saw, I showed you the developmental hierarchy. So during the development, so depending on what are the sources, one can discriminate the stem cells. It can be either embryonic, if it is coming from the embryo, or it can be fetal or adult if it is coming from fetus or adult. So in case of embryonic, it comes from the what I talked to you about the blastula stage, the inner cell mass. Those are the cells which is giving us to embryo proper. The embryonic stem cells can be derived from that ICM cells. Those are called embryonic stem cells. If you are getting from any fetal part or adult part, 
because during development what happens prior to gastrulation we have got this discrimination of embryonic versus extra embryonic that time they are retaining the characteristics to give rise to all the specific cell types that are present in our body as the development progresses or the gastrulation proceed three germ layers are defined then it becomes tissue restricted that is where the adult stem cell dogma comes there is another one which is called cancer stem cells the cells that cause that is recent understanding is regarding cancer is maybe the stem cells which are there in our body they defy the regular process of cell cycle or cell division they go away so during that when they go away then that is the time the cells keep on dividing instead of undergoing differentiation those are called cancer stem cell cancer causing cells or they remain in a quiescent state and whenever be based on the niche so they keep on dividing they retain attain the mitotic status they keep on dividing and give rise to the tumor tissue so that's why the cancer stem cell concept came so this is based on the sources then the types of sources that is what and based on the potential what potential they ingrain within them so when it is coming from embryo developing embryo embryonic stem cells since they are given as to all the cell types except the extra embryonic those are called pluripotent whereas zygote that is a single cell or when it divides into two to four cell because sometimes we see monozygotic twins even sometimes quadruplets so that is the stage because it is given as to the entire organism for example plants if you take the meristematic cells you can get the entire plant but in animal case it's only the early stage where you can get the entire organism before the discrimination of embryonic and extra embryonic part comes so that stage those are pluripotent for the when the blastocyst is formed where only embryonic part you are taking those are called pluripotent because they cannot give rise to extra embryonic that is the inherent pluripotency and the examples of the embryonic stem cells which are derived from the icm cells when germ cells are laid down primordial germ cells because that upon fusion also you are getting the entire organism they also have the pluripotent nature similarly embryonal carcinoma cells which are also pluripotent they can give rise to all the three germ layer derivative so this is the inherent pluripotency whereas another concept is reprogramming so you can take any somatic cell and bring back to the naive or pluripotent state like what is seen during embryo that is during reprogramming this actually concept in, i don't know how many of you have heard about yamanaka who got nobel prize in 2012 because of this reprogramming which is called induced pluripotent stem cells so you are inducing pluripotency in any kind of somatic cell the reason behind is because in case of pluripotent cells when the embryo is there you are getting three germ layers and you are getting all cell types but that is if you are thinking of any therapeutic implications so they are the embryo when you are taking the embryonic stem cells it is only that embryo is destroyed so if you want to think about your own cell types to bring the pluripotency in them so you have to have your signature that is your dna should be there so there should not be any immunological complications that is why the ipsc concept came where you can have your own stem cells which are pluripotent then you can differentiate into specific cell types which will resemble one of your cell type and that in case of therapeutic implications or cell replacement therapy you can give the boost so without any immunological complications or rejections further down the line in the hierarchy you come across tissue restricted stem cells which are either multipotent or unipotent multipotent in the sense they can also give rise to many cell types for example hematopoietic stem cell they can give rise to all the blood cell types neural stem cells it can also give rise to all the cell types that is present in our nervous system like neurons astrocytes oligodendrocytes the different cell types so those are called multipotent unipotent those are the cells which can give rise to only one single type so this classification even the fetal adult stem cell i have made the fetal stem cells here as you can see during child birth the umbilical cord blood is discarded same also placenta umbilical cord from that you can also get the stem cells so this is right wealth out of waste and these cells further can be ex exploited or explored to understand the 
what are some of the implications of the same? So now I told you about what are the stem cells. So then comes, okay, if these are the stem cells, so how to obtain those? So for embryonic stem cells, as I told, those are coming from the embryo. So the requisites will be embryo. The embryo can be obtained from in vitro fertilization, most of you must be familiar with. So this is where the sperm and sperm, those are fused. And during the before implantation, you have set of embryos. So whatever are the discarded embryos, which cannot be implanted into the mother's womb, those are taken for research. So from in vitro fertilization, the embryo, that blastocyst stage embryo, if you take, from that you can extract the ICM and you can generate the embryonic stem cells. From SCMT, that is somatic cell nuclear transfer, I will explain that. Or even parthenogenetic embryos, that is they are in most of the animals. But in human case, we don't see parthenogenesis. It's the vegetative propagation that is seen in case of animal. And that is what is done also in veterinary field. So the embryo, if you have from either of the sources, so you can either do direct embryo culture or you can do immunosurgery, laser micro dissection. Through laser, you can dissect out the ICM, direct embryo culture, then from that you have to get the ICM, inner cell mass, or immunosurgery, I will show you how to do it. Otherwise, you can have the somatic cell, which through reprogramming, I told you about induced pluripotent stem cells. That also I'll explain you during my during course of my presentation. So through reprogramming also, we can get the blastocyst stage embryo, extract the ICM and get the embryonic stem cells from that. So SCMT, as I told, somatic cell nuclear transfer. So as the name suggests, you are taking any somatic cell and nuclear transfer. So because we want to keep the identity of the somatic cell or if, for example, I want my cell to be there. So I can take any of my somatic cell because my identity is there within the DNA in that cell. So then I can take any of the, this is what is depicted here, patient cell you take. Then you have to have egg or ocel. So you remove the nucleus from this. So that this identity of the particular egg nucleus is gone. And then you fuse your cell or the nucleus with this. Then it maintains the signature of the patient or your cell. Then stimulate this to come to the stage of blastocyst. These are the inner cell mass. Then you remove this. And then at this stage, if you are implanting to another foster mother, then it becomes reproductive cloning. Dolly, most of you must be knowing about the sheep, first cloned sheep. So that is what this through reproductive cloning through SCNT process it came. Whereas for a human, there are ethical problems. You cannot clone yourself. So in this case, what we do, we take out these ICM cells, then we take culture these, maintaining culture, then differentiate. Since I told you these are the pluripotent cells, they can give rise to all the cell types of our body. Then you differentiate, giving specific cocktails. Then ask for the requirement, if you can direct the cells to differentiate into, for example, if there are any problem, I want to replenish the cells, if there are some, not damage. So I will differentiate into neural cells, then give to the patients. So by this, this is called therapeutic cloning. So we are not generating the organism, but we are generating the cells of our interest. So these are the specific stages that I already explained. And the reference the I have mentioned, if you guys are interested, read the chapter that Low et al. So very nicely he has explained how the journey of this SCNT has actually come across and subsequently how this field has come to it. So they, that's why you can understand very well how this field has come. But this field is nothing new. In fact, as early as 1938, it was known, Spoman's experiment. For the 1952 Big King, they demonstrated this SCMT phenomenon using the genopause egg. So they have taken very early stage, inubilated the egg, then less differentiated cell they have taken. Then the donor nucleus was transported to enucleated one, and most of them developed into tadpoles. But John Gordon, who got Nobel Prize along with Yamanaka in 2012, because of this experiment, he took from tadpole, which is slightly more differentiated. So that also the same procedure they did, less than 2% developed into tadpole. What it indicates, so the cell, wherever you are taking, during the developmental process, how early those are. 
early versus old one, that also determines the success or the efficacy of this procedure. So these are some of the drawbacks available to oocytes and heteroplasmy that is something because oocyte you have got the mitochondrial part also, mitochondrial DNA. So you are putting the nucleus or the cell. So by fusing that you are getting from the donor as well as from the recipient. So there the heteroplasmy concept comes. So new, newer technologies are also trying to remove the mitochondrial part by each number of mice. There are different ways of doing it. And another drawback is epigenetic signature maintenance. I will not got, go more deep into this, but only how to maintain. Uh, remember that during development, there are many genetic and epigenetic. Epigenetic means in the surrounding or the outside the genetic. So there are different phenomena are going on, methylation, acetylation, there are different events are going on. So those signatures also need to be maintained during normal development. So when you are doing SCNT, because your somatic cell is coming from another, so the signature maintenance from that or from the donor, it is maintained. That's why the problem comes to so the memory is written. And this graph shows, depending on where from the stage of donor nuclei, the success also depends. So two actually available to oocytes, so some people have started using also rabbit oocytes because human oocyte to get something if you have to do in human. Of course, for the therapeutic learning only it is permitted ethically, not for reproductive learning. Same also in case of animals, it is permitted reproductive learning. If you want to get better herbs, that is what they do. people do SCNT. So after Dali, there are many other species also have been cloned by this same method. So this is what the picture of Dali. And then comes parthenogenetic, what I said, vegetative propagation. There also the same way from the same. The somatic cell that is induced to form by mechanical or chemical means to form blastocyst, ICM is taken, and then you are getting either it is implanted to the foster mother and to get the same herb, superior herb, or you can have also the therapeutic aspect if you take out the ICM cells and culture. Then comes the embryonic stem cells, which I told by different by direct embryo culture, immunosurgery, or by laser microdissection. So this is the inner cell mass. So if you put very low power laser and you can extract this icing or you can culture this space, providing specific medium or cocktail of factors. So by which the strophoblast will grow separately and this ICM cells will grow separately. From that you can discriminate and take out the ICM cells which are growing. In immunosurgery, that is a concept of the terminology what is given, which is using some kind of immunology means if the antibody it is used and surgically you are dissecting out. So the concept behind is because this is the outermost zona and you have got the inner cell mass. So zona first is dissolved here using specific proteins or peptides. That's there are many enzymes are there. So it dissolves this glycoprotein layer. Then using specific because we use specific antibody which will bind to this outer surface, then you use complement. Complement function is to chew wherever the antibody is bound. So through this, the outermost layer is gone and you are getting only the inner cell mass. So this is what is done actually in our lab using one of the discarded human blastocyst. And these are the human ES cells from the blastocyst which have gone and cultured. These are mouse embryonic stem cells we have also cultured. Those can be grown in a, some kind of feeder layer or fibroblast layer. They provide tropic support or they can be grown as it is. So culturing this cell, what is the thing? Because you want to know how the cells are cultured. So as we will require specific factors for our growth, protein, fat, carbohydrate, there are many nutrients we require. Same way we also provide a nutrient broth and manipulate the conditions. It is, this is done in vitro or artificial condition. So we need to provide the same energy source, we have to provide growth factors. We have to provide specific proteins, specific carbohydrates for the cells to grow. So this is the how, this is the way we maintain the cells. And then I will talk about the next pluripotent cells, which is IPCs or induced pluripotent cells. So here, the concept behind is, if you have to induce pluripotency in somatic cell, you are bringing the cells to the same embryonic counterpart. So the genetic, even though in our body you have the same gene, but different organs or different tissues 
have a different set of signature or different proteins are expressed. How? Because sometimes some gene is active, some is inactive. And that is regulated in a very coordinated fashion. So this is what to bring the somatic cell, rewiring the system to bring to the naive state. So we have to probably express the genes which are expressed very early during development. And that is what the concept behind this induced pluripotency. So Yamanaka's group, they tested out those 24 different factors and nailed down to four factors, which are called Yamanaka factors, which is OCT4, SOX2, KLA4, and CMIN. So it is called as KSOM. Further, different investigators also have tried different other factors like Nanog is another, because these are pluripotent associated genes expressed, highly expressed in embryonic stem cell. So by overexpressing or in a fashion which also rewiring the system, they have brought this concept of induced pluripotency. And this way, they have made the IPSs. And they are the cell type selection is very critical from which cell, which somatic cell you are taking. Based on that also, the efficiency depends. The initial study was done mostly on the normal fibroblast. Now even stem cells, the tissue restricted stem cells also are used as one of the ideal sources to make these IPSs. By this, you are making patient-specific cells. The other advantage of this, if you have any genetic disease, for example. So because you are taking the somatic cell, you have got the same genetic signature, where any genetic defect is there, and if you are making the IPSs, it has got the same defective gene signature. So you are making the disease in a dish. That is one of the very elegant or striking aspect of IPSC's research. So many groups now are working to understand the disease per se de by developing IPSCs. And patient-specific cells, since you are developing, it has got also therapeutic implications. When you get the IPSCs, then differentiate it to different cell types, and then you can give, give back to the patient when it is required. So this is just the example showing IPSCs that we have developed in our lab from normal hybrids, how they look in culture. Then, this is what I talked about, how to get embryonic stem cells. Next comes adult stem cells. What are the prerequisites? So, same also comes, you have to find the tissue source. Then comes how to isolate and whether, because tissue, multiple cells are there. So, you have to get single cells and then you have to multiply also. You have to propagate those. So, you have to maintain. Then, depending on what are your requirements, you have to differentiate or Plasticity, that is called, I will also explain what is trans differentiation. So normal differentiation, when from a naive cell or more immature cell, you are getting mature cells, that is differentiation. Induced pluripotent cells, that is the phenomenon of de-differentiation. Because your differentiated cell, you are bringing to the more naive cell, that is de-differentiation. Trans differentiation and the trans, you guys must be familiar with cis and trans concept. So trans means outside. So the cells that are destined to become one cell type, when they cross the lineage barrier and give rise to another cell type, that is called trans differentiation. All these are materialized through cultural manipulations. So what kind of cocktail or growth factors we used on culture medium, that is what determines how the cells have to differentiate. Then you have to characterize and these purify, etc. So what are those cells? Where from we can get in our body? So during development, when this gastrulation, what I was telling, so embryonic stem cells are there. During gastrulation, three germ layers are developed. Then the germ layers are giving different cell types. So what happens? How in adult then you have adult stem cells? So these cells remain in distilled pockets in our body. Probably they escape the differentiation signal and they remain. And whatever the cells surrounding the niche, that retains the cells to remain as stem cells, and they remain in a quiescent state. Why? Quiescent means they retain all the physiological property, but they don't divide. They divide only when there is any kind of signal or they sense any defect. So, in response to any stimuli, they keep, they divide. But when it goes higher, then you are getting cancer. So, where all you can get in adult body the stem cells? In brain, we have got stem cells in specific pockets. Same also we have in bone marrow, that is the best example. All of us know bone marrow stem cells have been utilized in clinic.
unique impact that is the only stem cell which has gone, but now there are other stem cells also have gone. So same from bone marrow, you have got two different stem cell type. One is hematopoietic stem cells, one is mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells are the ones which can leave bone, fat, and cartilage. Muscle, adipose tissues, even from the gonads also we can get the stem cells. Dental pulp, those also retain the mesenchymal stem cells. In fact, these are the stem cells, not only these, but these are the soft specific ones, but now in many tissues or organs, we do find discrete effect. But the problem here, if you have to isolate stem cells, for example, if I want neural stem cells, do I need to really cut up on the brain? I probably cannot. Same also dental pulp, yes, when you are extracting tooth, you can get the dental pulp stem cells. Bone marrow, even though it is invasive, one can probably access bone marrow stem cells. Same also during bariatric surgery, you can have adipose tissues. But if I have to specifically get one particular cell, stem cell, either I have to depend on fetal part, which is aborted fetus, or from the bone marrow or tissue. Skin also has stem cells. We can take those, we can get keratinocyte, dermal fibroblast. As we know, when we have an injury, the fibroblasts are actually covering that area, so it is getting so all And even, I think all of you must have noticed the, this uh, lizard, lizard's tail. It sets up again, it grows. How does it happen? Because we all have stem cells, so those divide as well as differentiate so that you can regain or regenerate some potential they have, so you are getting back. So what I was telling that from different cells in our body itself, we can get stem cells. So this is the example of mesenchymal stem cell that we have extracted from bone marrow, even umbilical cord blood, which is thrown, umbilical cord, that also gives rise to UCMAC, even placental cells. So they have different, actually you can see how the cell structure looks vary also, depending on where from you are extracting the cells, and they also differentiate. So depending on what tissue you are interested in, you take that particular tissue, then how will you extract? Either you have to do enzymatic dispersion or you can do explant culture. So if you read Krishni book, you can get much more idea about how to culture the cells and what are the conditions required for that. So there, once you get those cells, you have now pluripotent stem cells or adult stem cells, then the question comes, you have to characterize those because these are artificially generated cells. So the characteristics of those stem cells, as I mentioned already, the potency, so they have to have the self-renewal because they have to divide. Self-renewal is giving to the cell, renewing themselves. So, so embryonic stem cells, since those are coming from very early embryo and being pluripotent, they have got indefinite self-renewal capacity. Why? Because they have got very, very high telomerase activity. I think most of you must be familiar about telomere. Every cycle the cell undergoes, cell cycle, telomere shortening happens. That is because the telomerase activity that in our cell we have, but in embryonic stem cell, since it has got very high telomerase activity, telomere shortening is not the problem. So it can have indefinite cell renewal unlike the tissue-restricted stem cells. So they are finite in their cell division capacity. Differentiation, those can be multipotent, pluripotent, unipotent, and the other thing is trans differentiation, what I was telling, they can give rise to the cells other than what they are destined to be, so they are highly plastic. Other one is regeneration potential, what I was talking about, region. Same also in our body, liver regenerates. And these cells are amenable to genetic manipulation. So when we get the cells, we do have to characterize those. And these processes has to have its own identity or the signature. So once we see cell renewal, not only the cell growth, even the characteristic signature or the gene genetic signature or epigenetic signature, that is what we determine when we do the experiment. That I will not go much deep into that, but you have to keep in mind. So that is what the way we that's how we do the characterization. I'll show you how the differences are proceeds. So this is self renewal I talked about. This can be either symmetric, both symmetric, asymmetric, as well as asymmetric. 
symmetric basically indefinite self plural what i talked about yes cells so those can one stem cell give rise to two stem cells further it gives rise to two one to two to another to two so it keeps on replicating itself so that is symmetric that seen mostly in the pluripotent embryonic stem cells symmetric and asymmetric so these are seen basically in the tissue restricted stem cells where a stem cell can give rise to two stem cells when it comes to this progenitor or precursor stage one cell can give rise to one stem cell and another progenitor precursor so this is symmetric plus asymmetric sometimes the unipotent ones it can give rise to one stem cell and another progenitor or precursor this pre precursor can give rise to more mature cell two mature cells and one case it can give rise to one mature and one stem cell like a progenitor cell so this become totally asymmetric that's how the cells renew themselves and then coming to differentiation they are as i was telling we need to have specific cocktails of factors and we have to see during every stage how the cells mature or differentiate so the chemical composition of culture medium is important i think the niche the outside the ecm components how the cell cell interact because that is what determines how the cells have to differentiate this we can think about how to bring the corollary when you are going in a traffic so you have three different signals one is stop sign then yellow is get ready green is to go green signal you get the cellular architect they also define the same thing so this process to bring kind of harmony during the process so when it is well planned and everybody is following the rules everything goes in a pro proper way but near airport or station you can see this kind of structure and sometimes this kind of anarchy leads to even some accident and death same thing happens also in cells if cells are not following the specific signaling cues the same thing happens and because of which we get the cancer so this is what the example if the normal stem cells the way they mature this is normal normal hematopoiesis for ready mature cells but because of some kind of insult or mutation they become cancerous and you are getting the much more proliferation rather than differences these some of the examples i am showing these are the neural cells that have been differentiated from embryonic stem cells and this is how we identify whether we are getting really neurons not only the phenotype that we look under the microscope even we try to validate using specific markers on the antibodies that we stain or we do pcr to see the specific gene expression then same way not only we see that even we understand how they do in live culture they look in a dish they are very static but actually they are highly dynamic as you can see how even in this also you see so they talk to each other they interact with each other during this process and that's why the inter body plan is made during the this process of development the hierarchical development this is how because of the cross talk with cell to cell interaction the factors how they interact that is how determine the body plan and they are highly dynamic so we can also monitor the process on real time that was ectodermal derivative neural differentiation this is mesodermal derivatives which are the muscle most and these are as you can see the contractility these are the cardiac myocytes like the heart beating this is what we can generate also in culture not only generate this we can also enrich the population by giving defined factors next is skeletal muscles that also can be there this is this picture i have borrowed from duke university they have shown skeletal muscles and this is from the human embryonic stem cell that we have done in fact the specific signature we have seen that this can be differentiated into skeletal muscles so this is mesodermal derivative next comes endoderm endoderm that is pancreatic eyelids so that also we have succeeded in differentiating it shows also glucose stimulated insulin release so this is the physiology of the cells so i will not go much deeper into this i'll just show this is the combined on the compendium of the slides how the embryonic stem cells show the pluripotent nature by differentiating into ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm ectoderm what i show the neural cells or i was telling multipotent they give rise to neurons not only one type different neural types like dopaminergic serotonergic these are the neurotransmitter releasing cells 
and Parkinson's, if some of you may be familiar, where actually these dopaminergic neurons are getting degenerated. So if you can replenish the degenerated cells with the healthier one, that's what the therapeutic strategy people are thinking of. And not only neurons, you can also get astroglia, oligodendroglia. Same also from ejoderm, you are getting skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and ejoderm pancreatic islets, which I already showed you the slides. Then coming to other stem cells, I showed you the mesenchymal stem cells. Those can give rise to bone fat cartilage. What I'm showing you are osteocytes, that is bone cells, and adipocytes, the fat cells, chondrocytes are not included here. Even that also can be generated. But next thing comes the plasticity. So plasticity, they are crossing the lineage barrier. Hematopoietic stem cells can give rise to neural cells and vice versa. Same thing that I would show you here. The same mesenchymal stem cells, based on the cocktail of factors you can bring, they can behave like, they can give rise to neural-like cells. I can show you this video. How the cells, after different, after plating or giving the cells, you can see how they change the morphology and forming neural like structure. Same also the next slide I will go. Here you can see they are giving more vessel like structure or endothelial like structure. So this is not only a differentiating in culture looking under microscope, you can even monitor life under the live microscope on the time lapse system. So this is the beauty of the fascinating area in cell biology that occurs. You can understand how the cells, they look, how they behave, how they interact. Then I will come to the part, the next or the final part, that is the application, why stem cells? So as I have already talked about the cells, how you isolate, how you characterize, and then after characterize, you can also propagate that. And depending on your requirement, you can differentiate those. So what's purpose it would serve? So as basic biologists, the question that we ask what, how, and why? So there, that's why, the intricacies of development we try to study using the stem cells. Why? Because if you can under, understand the normal development, one can easily answer what happens during any disease state. So this is, this is what the basic biological standpoint we want to study the stem cells. Applied science, it can be used as a diagnostic tool. Like you can have disease model, what I showed about IPSCs. Predictive model for drug toxicity assay in pharma industries. You can develop livestock or germplasm in veterinary field by using SCNT or pathogenetic means. And uh, most of all, people are more interested in having therapeutic implications. So you can also using this, you can develop antibodies, proteins, and cells, and you can have a model to study disease itself. And for cellular therapy, not only cells, you can have tissues and even organs developed from stem cells. That also I'll come to the tissue engineering part. I'll go a little faster, I think probably I'll over the time. So what are the different tools we have? It can be either preventive, reparative, or regenerative. So intrinsic regeneration potential I told about liver. And if we can, since we have discrete pocket in our body, the stem cells are there residing. So if you can, Activate the endogenous machinery to understand how the differentiation progresses, how the cells remain in a quiescent cell state, and how to activate the mitotic state in those quiescent population, and that too in a controlled fashion, so that we can actually activate the endogenous machinery to serve the purpose of like replenish the degenerated cells. Then correcting defective gene by gene therapy, replenishment of the damaged or lost cells by cell replacement therapy, replacement of defective organs by tissue engineering or organ transplantation. So gene therapy is nothing but replacing the defective gene for which you require a vector. Usually viral vectors are used, replicative incompetent viral vectors. Then you are replacing the defective gene with a corrected gene part and then you are giving to the patient directly. So this can be either done directly or through cell-based delivery. Recent news, some of you must have heard that peak to human heart transplant, where actually they have, the scientists in uh, this Maryland Medical Center, they have genetically altered the peak heart by knocking down three of the peak genes and six of the human genes so that it can be easily accepted. So this is done through gene therapy or gene editing strategy. Newer technology has come. 
where you can detect the gene can be also rectified using the gene editing technology. So there are many different diseases in fact within a tribe. Jim Wilson in University of Pennsylvania was the father, or he was the pioneer in this gene therapy. There are some hurdles, but now again it has come to the limelight. Cell replacement therapy, as I already talked, you can take cells, either embryonic stem cells you cannot have because those are coming from the developing embryo, it cannot match. Besides, because of their indefinite self renewal, they can form, there is a possibility of teratoma formation. So, very potent stem cells as it is cannot be given to the patients. They need to be differentiated to tissue restricted stem cells or more mature cells, then you give to the patients. But that therapeutic thing, still it has a long way to go because we need to find out the compatibility. That's why the IPSC cells come into the rescue where you are deriving the stem cells on the patient specific stem cells. So for various diseases, probably the cell replacement therapy will work. And even the plasticity, as we know, and the best example, obviously, hematopoietic stem cells. So if you can also directly reprogram the cells, one cell to another cells, and then give, because you cannot have access to stem cells from every organ, especially from brain or heart. So if you can have one cell and then transcription, that is still controversial, but people are still working on it. And the therapy initially, what was done from the fetal stem cell population today, this is the Parkinsonian model. Dopaminergic neurons are degenerated in the substantial nigral part. And using the fetal stem cells after surgery, you can see this is restored. So for this, we, this is actually the experiment from our lab where in fact in the brain, the rat brain, we have injected the dopaminergic neurons. And so this, you can see the hemiparkinson. On one side, there is a defect. Embryonic stem cell, as it is, injection doesn't help. But the DNA neurons injection or the neural stem cell injection, it has restored that. So for any kind of cell therapy, these are the different steps you have to do. For example, in Parkinson's, you have got dead nerve cells not producing dopamine. So you have to implant stem cells. Then they have to also physiologically do their corrective function to secret dopamine, then the functional distress is there. For that, you need to find first what are the right type of stem cell you want to use. Then you want to match whether it is matching to the host so that there is no graft hosted versus host disease. Then you have to place at the right place so that it will function normally. So these are the signaling cues you will get and you will secret dopamine. The same way, IPS is also, we know that it can have patient-specific cells and then you differentiate and adjunct when it is required. So this therapy has gone into clinic now in Japan. They are doing for the retinal or the corneal transplantation. Even here, the IPS is derived in the glomerulation that they have shown also, this particular group in uh, Japan. So they have shown also kidney cells can be derived and those can be also differentiated and given back. But it has not gone to the clinic or animal level studies only have done. But to clinic, it has gone actually differentiating and giving to the patients that I will show when I talk about tissue engineering. So now we saw 2D cell culture differentiation. Then the implication, one is gene therapy, cell replacement therapy. Cell level then now comes to tissue, organ, or like a bio implant. So how do you get that? So tissue engineering, that is falling on the tissue, interdisciplinary field of tissue engineering. For that, you require a scaffold because you have to give a 3D structure to our organ. So in that case, you have to select the biomaterials or biomolecules which will be biocompatible, immunocompatible, histocompatible. This can be either from natural source or synthetic source. And more often, this has to be biodegradable, not like, for example, bone, if you want to have metallic implant, if you are using, that may not have to be biodegradable. But if you want the resident stem cells to house to that scaffold and regenerate, then you want that to be degraded eventually. And they are the stem cells. Once you have the scaffold, you can have the stem cells of your interest, then put that and then you can bring the culture that and you can have the 3D structure. So that can be implanted. So the examples, bioartificial skin has been developed. This is normal versus bioartificial skin using the stem cells. No guidance channels have been developed. Even the endothelial cells used for vascular prosthesis. The same way there are many works which I was talking about the therapeutic implications of this IPSCs or induced pluripotent stem cells, or embryonic stem cell derived. This has been done in tissue, by tissue engineering method 
my group from uh, Japan became, that is, uh, Sasai is no more, unfortunately, but he is the pioneer in this field. So what they have developed, they have taken these pluripotent stem cells, using specific biomaterial, they have cultured those in 3D, and giving specific cocktails, they have seen optic cop like structure, and that has given to a retina dye. So that has been now actually in specific eye diseases, they are giving to the patients. It is now in phase one and phase two provided is going for the clinical trial. Same also the organoid. What I mentioned about in 3D, you can make smaller organoid for the research purpose or you can make organ. So most of the research now confined to organoid level, which are small in culture, you can make small mini size, miniature size. So this is also one example, which is brain development. From Austria, Jürgen Nowblik, he has developed from same pluripotent stem cells or IPSCs, he has developed the brain-like structure, which as you can see the optic structure here. Same also another group from Austria also, he has developed, I have probably not, yes, it's there, Professor Rane. They also have developed the same organoid-like structure. What is the basis or the importance of this? Because once you are developing this, this is actually retaining its ultra structure like what happens in our body. So you have the 3D structure, you can understand the development or the special distribution of cells and the interaction better. So that would help in understanding the tissue organization per se. Same way, it's not only organoid, even the organs like first tissue in your trachea, the wing pipe has been developed, it has also gone to clinic for saving the life. It has been already studied and reported well. What we have done in our lab, bone tissue engineering specific scaffold we have used, and those we have cultured mesenchymal stem cells on those, those are differentiated into bone tissues or osteocytes. We are doing now in vivo experiments and it shows also some promise that it can get integrated in the system. The other interesting thing, not only, yes, okay. The next thing, the customized organs. So what people are thinking, not only bio, like a biomaterial you have to use, then put the stem cells. They're thinking if you can take cadaveric tissues, and because here the entire organizational the structure is intact, so you would decellularize that. After decellularization, so you have the skeleton there, then you incorporate the stem cells into it. There you will get the again after incorporating or cellularizing again, recellularizing, you will get the heart. So I will show you the example here by this group, Philip. So he has published first in 2008. Then in 2014, the protocol is given. So here you can see three different organs, lung, heart, and kidney. So this is actually from the rat and this is from human, lungs and heart. So they have taken the cadaveric tissues and using specific detergents, they have decellularized. You can see it has become totally white and that also characterization is done. So no cells will be there. Further by injecting cells, so they have taken those, for example, heart cells, they have taken the heart cells and it is already forming a heart and that they have characterized, this is the long tissue, this is this is from rat in fact. And here I can play the video, you can see how the cells are beating. I hope you all can see this, the beating cells. So after recellularization, it is again behaving like the intact heart. And same also in human case, so they have seen specific marker expression in long as well as so these are ECM components. So ECM, the extracellular matrix component, which keeps the cells together. That's why after recellularization, they have defined that, okay, the cells are being formed, decellularized followed by recellularized. Same thing. So the next, it's not only taking the cadaver. The most interesting, another interesting thing, which all of you may think or appreciate, it's plant and animal cross species. So here you see mammalian, one where you can decellularize and you can see the structure. This is actually spinach leaf. So if you can compare, that's what the study by this Barshal in biomaterial they have published in 2017. So you can see the similar kind of structure where you can see as if the artery and veins are moving. The same, they have spinach leaf also. They have decellularized and incorporated the cells. These are umbilical cord derived or umbilical cord QX cells, endothelial cells, and these are MSCs. So after decelleration, recelleration, they have seen the cells. 
and in fact they have also incorporated the cardiomyocytes from human pluripotent cells unfortunately i cannot play the video these are the cardiomyocytes beating cardiomyocytes if you can go through the paper they have the video there you can also see this so it's so fascinating so how actually this is where the thinking process involved research is nothing but critical and rational thinking you can bring those thoughts and you have to make it work the other approach people are following to make the organ like a cadaveric organ transparent to make it transparent then you can see the skeletal structure there and then you can incorporate the cells of your in the same way people are doing but now the era is 3d 3d era that is the 3d bioprinting that concept has come where you can print print the entire organ so what is the concept behind it this is first to take whatever organ you are interested in you are imaging the organs by x ray ct scan or mri then you are selecting by computer graphics you are selecting okay the organ picture is already there so then you are having selecting the material which material you have to take either synthetic or natural or extracellular matrix depending on whatever you want to make then you see cells of your interest then with a printer like a like an inkjet printer or there are some extrusion based printer laser assisted printer so you have to print layer by layer then you get the the same is actually explained here also so you can print layer by layer the tissues and which can be utilized for various purposes cell replacement drug designing because you can study those at the for finding the drugs candidates tissue engineering and even as a disease part people are been thinking humanized organ so which i told you also before the pig heart where through gene uh, therapy also targeting they have done so here the stem cells are injected halfway through gestation especially in pig or sheep then offspring will have partly human cells those organs can be given it's a very like a concept is good but there are still lot of questions but still now people are thinking of also how to tackle those because the porcelia virus is one of the major bottleneck which people used to think but now newer strategies coming but maybe you have to wait for that so the same also humanized organ in peak so for the life of improvement you can do the organ transplantation can be done that's right the strategy is there but one needs to think about how to critically evaluate and utilize that for the therapy purpose not only that from organ to organ now it is coming to babies so can you make babies so that is the conceptually if you see you can have the cells either from somatic cell or embryonic stem cells then bring those back somatic cell induce pluripotent stem cells then you can bring those back to the primordial germ cells those if you want to get the female counterpart of the germ cells so you can you have to put a female mice like it's in the animal stage because in human it's still a question mark the male cells of the sperms can be prepared here then you can get the sperms or ovum then you try to fuse that make the zygote and you can get the babies so this is what the concept also by using the same strategy i see it all they have got also using the ipc derived cells they have also got the f1 progenies that means they are functional and they can also give the progenies intact so this is the way the development is proceeding in the stem cell field so you can get not only the 2d level cells tissues organs organoids organs even reproductive cloning is possible so this is just to show a cartoon went in for a simple blood test and got cloned by mistake so these are the implications in clinic or medicine which the last aim i added in the medical implications even the pharma industries you can have this once you have this organoids or organs you can have the strategy developed where you can find the specific drug targets because for every disease you cannot have the model animal model so if you can make disease in a dish so these are the things that would help in finding specific drug targets which i listed some of those here so basically like summarizing that you can have stem cells in culture you can feel the cell. in fact i tell my students you not only have to look you have to feel the cells talk to them then cells should be and this is what the cells after you get the cells then you can have battery of implications 
So in cell therapy, you can study normal embryogenesis mechanism of DG. You can study drug targeting, even normal development. That's teratology or early development. We are proceeding. Why there is any birth defect? You can study. So before concluding, what I can say where we have reached now in this field, like different as I have listed here, different different disorders and where all the stem cell. What kind of stem cells have already gone into the clinic? The best is even the limbal stem cell transplantation, what is going on, LB Prasad I Institute, Shankar Netra, etc. So they are restoring vision, which is really great. So the stem cell field has got a lot of potential, but one has to understand a lot of groundwork need to be done. And then one has to also practice caution. You should not just go by what people say. You have to think, understand, and you have to understand what all to be tried and what all potential it has got and we have to explore further. So what I talked, manipulate genes using the stem cells, we can have genetic engineering, lab grown on gas, tissue engineering, drug design and delivery that is in the pharma industry implications, therapeutic cloning, transgenesis, this transgenesis in the animal veterinary field, therapeutic cloning, also I talked at the cell replacement therapy. But before concluding, because this is meant for the students who are in science field, I would talk also tell something, my end my talk saying, what is science? It's nothing but exploring the possibilities. It's not just physics, chemistry, maths, or biology. It's the innovation or innovative thinking. And how would you utilize that? This is what, what I have listed. Life in science, it's nothing but learning. Eats and bots of our very existence and fostering excellence, whatever we do and inculcating sincerity, commitment, inquisitiveness, enthusiasm, novelty, courage, and endurance. And as a student, these are the characteristics you have to have so that you will, at the end, you will experience the sparks of success. And there is nothing great when you see, as French psychologist has said, the joy of discovery is certainly the liveliest that the mind of human can ever feel. Those who don't know the torment of unknown cannot have the joy of discovery. So as a student of science, you have to think, then you have to think, you have to collaborate, not collide. You have to be more aware of, especially in stem cell field, the means for the reality. And then you have to think whether you want to make your future bleak or promising. Thank you. I would like to end my talk by showing all these great words of the great inspiring personality that we all admire and adore. Thank you. I will be happy to take any questions that you have. I, I have exceeded the time. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nibiri. So the I, session is open for discussion. Okay, there is a question in the chat box. By the help of stem cells, we can make clones as cloning is possible through stem cell technology. Is cloning a legal tender in India? Whether it is legal? Yeah, in, in India. India. Is yes. cloning is legal? We have actually from Department of Biotechnology and ICMR, we have specific guidelines are already laid. So cloning of animals is permitted. But if you are thinking of human, in fact, if you think not from the philosophical stand, we are crossing now 120 billion, right? Why do we need to clone any human? So, and the other thing, okay, if you ask me if you want to clone anybody, I would probably tell yes, I want to clone my parents. That is emotional. But scientifically thinking, the cloning is not permitted because it is not ethically correct. So when you are taking for cloning also, in fact, you are not doing any vegetative propagation, it's the, it has to be reproductive cloning. The normal fertilization, whatever happened, that is normal, that is the normal procedure. But if you want to do on your own any cloning and take it and through either SCNT or from IPSCs, if you want to make it the germ cells, gonads, and then you want to do cloning, no. It's restricted area or prohibitory area of research. IPSCs you can make, human ESCs you can make, those are restricted area of research. But cloning is certainly not permitted, it is prohibited area of research. But Hope you got your answer, uh, Rohan. Ma'am, I, yeah. I had a yes. question. So we actually did uh, this similar, this particular topic in uh, university also. And 
one thing which even a professor uh, talked about was the ethical issues concerning stem cells because these stem cells are taken by embryos and the research is done basically on cells which were supposed to become human so now what are your views regarding that like how do we you know yes. the ethical line okay yes when the human yeast cells were established right uh, in 1998 so that time there are a lot of furor were there even like 1980 when mouse yeast cells were into being that was okay then that actually led further to the pluripotent stem cell research but when human yeast cells were established the ethical concern was huge they were thinking that because gerhard's group they took from the germ cells but the initial part, whatever was taken from the embryo mixed stem cells. So, um, what should I say? The um, Thompson's group. Yes, I was just blanking. Thompson's group. They have taken human embryo, 98. The first paper published. So, that time there are a lot of, especially from the religious group, they thought that were destroying the embryos. But as I showed the hierarchy, you are taking the embryos only at the blastocyst stage before it comes to the gastrocyst, before implantation. So if the cells are not implanted, during gastrocyst only the three germ layers, that particular body plan is laid down. And during that stage, you are getting three germ layers and specific organ-specific stem cells are there or cellular types are being formed. So that's why, as for that time, due to the religious sector, the ethical guidelines, a lot of discussions went on. Now there is a society for International Society for Stem Cell Research. Last year, in fact, there are a lot of discussions also going on because, as for the guideline, we can take in human case actually day 14 till 14 days, gastrulation doesn't proceed. After 14 days only, you are getting the gastrulation. So after that, the body plan is made. So before that, whatever is there. It's, those are the naive cells. So destroying and that too, when you are taking the embryo for research, you are taking only the discarded one, which cannot be implanted. So by that, you are not discarding, you are not destroying any embryos that are actually functional and which can be implanted. And even those people who are storing the embryo freezing, after a while, they may not need it. So in that case, if that can be donated for research purpose, as you know, the implications of stem cell research, one can probably move forward with those. And now, even that 14 days, whatever the uh, mark was there, that beyond that, you are not supposed to take the embryos. The recent new recent discussion is going on. Because of the potential implications, one can probably take even beyond 14 days embryos. So my view, if you ask, so as much as possible, since you are taking an IPC, Anyway, that has come now, which has actually drawn much more attention since you are taking any somatic cell, making those IPSCs, these ethical questions doesn't arise basically. So you can have both the cells, but for research purpose, whatever the discarded ones you are taking, are making wealth out of waste. So that should not be any problem uh, So ma'am, thank you for the explanation. I also had another question. Uh, you mm -hmm. talked about IPS. So one of the things which I understood was you basically induce pluripotency in somatic cells. And uh, ma'am, those somatic cells might have some sort of, uh, you know, gene, uh, some mutation or something which might get amplified during uh, inducing pluripotency. So how do we tackle with that? Yes, you are absolutely right. That is what I said that disease in a dish. If you have any genetic disorder, the same thing you are replicating in a dish. So you are having the same disease in front of you in a dish, culturing that. Then you find out how this disease has, first of all, the inception. So how did it happen? Then what should we do to reverse that? Now you must have heard about the gene editing concept. If it is a genetic disorder, we can probably work in the same dish, whatever we have the disease in front of us. So we can find out which particular area is mutated, whether we can rectify that by gene editing and make that normal. So that is one of the approaches where you can think of how to tackle this problem. 
And basically, when you are taking also, we take from the somatic cell if you know the normal individual we are taking or the disease. And depending on where the disease is there, it's not that everywhere the mutation is there. So depending on that, we can have the disease in a disease as well as we can have the normal sex with us. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. I think there are some questions in the yeah. You have a question from Tejaswini. Yeah. Which gives better result, organ transplant or stem cell derived organs and implanting them into human body, ignoring ethical issues as of now and assuming that both are not rejected by the host immune system? So the question is whether organ transplant or stem cell derived? Yes. Yes. Which is better? Yes. Actually, stem cell derived organs, when you are thinking, we are at the organoid stage. Organs have not yet come into picture except the 3D printing. In fact, all of you probably should watch. Uh, there is a TED talk, uh, Anijji Melon, uh, what's his name? I'm forgetting the scientist's name. So there was a TED talk, how he has developed 3D printed kidney. And it has been given to a patient and which is now functioning normally. So 3D printing, it's a very like a... Uh, what should I say? Eye-catching or very nice technology has come now. But you have to also keep in mind that it has to be proper. So it's not that simple as, as it looks like a printing thing. So once you have the entire skeleton made, then you have to have every cell at a particular position. So the things that I showed you also, how even from plants also they are making decelerization, decelerization, same also cadaveric tissue. So if you can make that, but we have not reached to that stage which can go to cleaning. Only very few of the areas like 3D printing has come. But the organoid, that is for research purpose. But this cell replacement therapy, which has gone to cleaning already. And IPC derived whatever the retinal structure that has gone to cleaning. So which is better, that is something it is a context dependent thing. So which organ or which cells you require? Because for hematopoietic cells, we know that bone marrow derived stem cells are fine. Even if you have any bone defect, for example, or cartilage defect, that time, in fact, we can one can think of mesenchymal stem cells to use. Or you can make the 3D structure of that and you can implant. Depending on the defect, one has to decide which will be better or applicable, suited, best suited. I hope I gave you the answer. Then the stem cell derived organs are better as they reduce the chance of, chances of organ rejection. Organ rejection, that is what one has to, it has to have patient specific ones. Then only you can think of organ rejection or like the way now they have done in big heart by gene editing or mutating the things which will be accepted by the human. One can think of that. But still, people have to sort out of complexities there or complications. So one needs to address all those before going to the clinic. Uh, by Any the other questions? Rohan Saxon, by the help of stem cells, we can make the clones. As cloning is possible through stem cell technology, is cloning a legal trend? Okay, that already I answered. And you can just make the clones. Okay, yeah. you already answered. Any other questions? And many, in fact, many times I get queries regarding the cord blood banking. Uh, one more question has come. What is the status of cancer stem cell research today? Yes. Yes, cancer stem cell research, it's many labs, many groups all over the world they are working. Even we are also working in similar line. So they are, first of all, we have to understand how a normal cell becomes cancerous or how to reward the cancer stem cell because they are remaining in the hypoxic niche. So in that niche, the way they are interacting with the microenvironment, the tumor microenvironment, what kind of signal crosstalk is going on? Whether we can reverse that phenomenon, there are different, because when you are giving any therapeutic model you are implementing, mostly it is directed towards the rapidly dividing cells. And cancer stem cells remaining as quiescent in that core, they are not actually the target of any kind of drug. 
that is the reason why you are getting tumor relapse so now newer strategies are coming how to target but unfortunately the biomarkers or the specific markers of cancer stem cells are lacking because many of the stem cell markers which we see normally even stem cells same thing is expressed in cancer stem cells so if you can think of any targeted therapy to cancer stem cell we have to have specific markers now immunotherapeutic tools are coming even nk cells best car t car nk those are coming we have to now find out its specific markers and how to specifically target cancer stem cell that is what the research is going on now if you can do that then the tumor relapse that possibility can be prevented even adjuvant therapy also people are working on how to combine different therapeutic modalities not only targeting cancer cells also cancer stem cells any other questions find any more questions in the chat box though So if no more questions then we will uh, end our session today uh, we thank uh, dr nibedita for joining us and elaborating the students about the stem cell research that is happening around and how that can be applicable to uh, humans and other veterinary science sciences uh, thank you thank you so much dr nibedita for joining us today thank you so much it's my pleasure Anybody is having any query, they can reach me by email. I am available. So thank sure, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, students, our <clears throat> uh, next lecture on antibody engineering has got cancelled for today. Uh, so Dr. Jodi Bala will be joining us tomorrow. Okay. So due to unfortunate. Uh, due to unfortunate uh, circumstances, she cannot join us today. She will be joining us tomorrow. So for today, uh, we close these sessions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.